In part 1 of the Agora models 1 to 8th scale build for the Jaguar E-Type, I finished off the engine and pretty much the main front chassis. In this one I'm going to move on to the main chassis itself for the middle and the rear section, doing some of the suspension bits and then moving on to the interior and basically finishing off the entire model. Now this one is not as detailed as I've seen them before, but all the parts are nice and crisp and uh, like I said before, if you are going to be building this more like a scale model kit, then this is a super cool base to start off of. And if you're just going to go for the assembly route, it is still a really nice part uh, of building to be done and also a super nice end result in the end. Now, if you're going to be painting them, there are a lot of areas that don't really need anything, but there are still plenty that do need a little bit of touch up or even some paint here and there. For instance, some of these suspension components are just bare plastic and they look a bit cheap and with a bit of paint, they could look a lot nicer and a lot more realistic. And there's plenty more parts of these around this build. And that's not to uh, sort of take the blame on Agora. They have to just uh, choose what they want to paint and what they don't. And some of these parts are simply just functional and will never be visible again. So I can see why some of the cost was skipped uh, here and there just to keep it down a little bit more as these kits are already pretty expensive. So with that all being said, I have chosen not to do any painting or additional detailing on this kit. I'm simply just enjoying the assembly process and all the other regular 124th scale kits that I build are the ones that I paint and detail as that is more my scale and my style that I like to do that on. These kits can be quite daunting and overwhelming if you do just, uh, decide to take it on uh, fully detailing and painting them and that is not something I currently have time for but maybe when some of these builds are out of the way then I can do that in the future I of course will but for now I'm just enjoying the assembly and sharing it with you guys. So in the meantime I've pretty much finished off the rear suspension and also the rear axle and that is now all going to be assembled to the main chassis itself with some sway bars and some other suspension components. The middle section of the exhaust is now screwed in place and that finishes off the chassis for now. You will see that later on once it is fully assembled onto the model itself. For now we're going to move on to the interior starting off with the center console. Now again another point of additional detailing on the center console not so much but on the main interior tub there wasn't really any carpet or anything like that. So it could be a good idea to upgrade this one with a bit of carpet, maybe even some fabric for on the seats or anything you'd like, but just a bit of flocking would also just make this a lot nicer. Now I did find a couple of very small points here and there, uh, specifically on this handbrake when you put it on it shows the beige from underneath through it and I figured with a bit of black it would look, uh, look a lot nicer, so I just took out some permanent marker and did it that way. So like I said, for the interior, the main tub is the same beige plastic as the rest. So with a bit of flocking or a bit of carpeting material, that could be brought out to life even more. Now it's not super uh, big of a deal to me as most of this will be hidden with the seats underneath the dashboard. But if you do want to bring a bit more life to this kit, then flocking or carpeting would look a lot nicer on these parts. One of the downsides that I have found on these kits is that they are trying to make it a bit more realistic than a standard plastic kit and specifically on the seats they tend to make them out of a sort of flexible plastic rubber type and that isn't really paintable at least from my experience I've tried it in the past it painted fine and then after a couple of months some of the paint starts cracking as the material underneath is still a bit flexible and moving. So if you want to repaint everything, I would suggest to either just uh, have a paint that is flexible for these parts 
And if you do know something that would work, it would be really interesting to me to know what I could use in some of the future projects that I have lined up for these seats to repaint them. So uh, any project suggest product suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments down below. That would help me out a lot. Uh, but for this one, the center and the lower half of the seat are flexible and the outer shell is made out of plastic. So that could be painted, but those cushions can't really at least from the paints that I've used. So again, let me know if there is a solution for it. I think there is, but would still like to know from you guys. So I've kind of lost the point of my actual remark on this one, but I think that uh, if you do want to repaint it, pretty much all the interior components can be repainted. And the only problem area, so to speak, would be the seats, but there should be solutions for that. Okay, well, moving on. In the meantime, I've started assembling the headlights and also the hood to move on to some more body work and also moving on to the window frame. Now one of the weird things when looking through the instructions, this window frame actually needs to be put in with a hammer. And no, I'm not kidding, it actually does. So these four hooks on the bottom just need to slide and slide in place. And then there are some small pins on uh, each end. One did go in pretty easily. The other one did need a bit of persuasion. However, this window frame is made out of a softer metal and it bent quite easily. So I didn't want to go full uh, Arnold mode on this with a hammer and just ruin it by smacking it in place. But then again, they do say it needs it in the instructions. Nonetheless, I just hurt my fingers really badly trying to push it in anyway. And I succeeded most of the way and uh, then had to bend the rest of the window frame back into shape. Not a big deal, but it's kind of a weird way of doing it in my opinion. And with that being said, I could move on to the door. Some more of the interior needs to be done on this inside for the door panel and also the functioning window that goes up and down some of the window frames and the mechanisms and hinges to keep the door in place and have it opening as well. doors now fully assembled, they could also be screwed in place with the hinges. Now with most of the interior completed, I could move on to the dashboard. It needed a couple of the chrome bits, some stickers for the dials, some clear parts, and also a glove compartment. So one of the parts that has been waiting since package one is the steering wheel. This one is incredibly nicely detailed, has a super, super nicely detailed logo in the center and also a nice wood grain on the outer ring or hoop of the wheel. And this could then, along with the steering column, be screwed in place to the dashboard. The glove compartment could be put in place and then I could move on to putting the engine and main body together before pressing the dashboard in place. Now that the dash is in place, I can move on to putting the main interior tub in as well. There is a small circuit board and some wires now attached to it. It's not really that hard, simply just follow the instructions and it pretty much falls in place. 
all of the wires are labeled and so is the circuit board so they can simply just be snapped in place. If it doesn't fit, that means that that is not the right one for that position. You probably need to put on some reading glasses to see which number needs to go where. Now, this one also has some lights. That's what all of the wires are for, for the uh, headlights and the taillights. And that is, of course, all done with that circuit board. You can put a battery in the oil pan that has been shown in episode one. Now, I'm not going to be doing that as I seriously don't care about these lights and I don't have the batteries in my house that need to go in here. And I didn't really feel like buying them for the video specifically. Uh, but if you do want to know how these lights look, I would suggest to go to the Agora Models website where they have a full display and showcase of this model with all of the functioning parts, lights, etc. Also a quick side note, in the meantime we're going to be moving on to assembling the wheels, or at least my wife moved on to assembling the wheels. Uh, the wiring was a little bit of a mess that could be my fault, but that made it a lot harder to put the chassis and interior in. I didn't really show it on video as it was a little bit of a frustration point, but in the end after moving it around and pressing it in place it did work, but it was a bit of a tight squeeze. With that said, the wheels have now been assembled. This needed to be repeated five times. There is a spare wheel in the trunk, and then of course four wheels all round. It was quite the task, and I was really happy that my wife wanted to do it, as I wasn't really looking forward to doing that five times over. So all of the wheels were assembled, and I could put on the tires. Now straight out of the packaging, these rubber tires are quite firm and don't really want to bend over the wheels. So I simply just put them into some really hot water for a couple of minutes, that softens them a lot, dry them off quickly, and while they are still hot and flexible, you can press and pull them over the wheels. It still isn't super easy, but it's a lot easier than without having to heat them up, because if they're cold, they're never gonna go over the wheels. So that is a really nice tip that I put into the instructions, but it is something I would suggest doing. I've tried it without, and that simply did not work. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be going over some of the final photos of this build. I really enjoyed assembling it a lot. It is a really nice build to do. And also, if you wanna build this as a model kit, a super nice base to start off of. If you're interested in purchasing one of these for yourself or any of the other products Agora Models offer, feel free to check out the website agoramodels.com. I will be leaving links in the description down below. 